Here we're going to explore a nice improper integral. And we're actually going to check that it converges carefully, which is something that we usually skip. And we're going to express its value as an infinite sum. We can't get a nice closed form for this value because I don't think one exists for the infinite sum that we'll get to. Okay, so let's see what we have. Our goal is to calculate the integral from one to infinity of one over x minus ln x quantity squared dx. Like I said, this is an improper integral, and it's an improper integral because of the infinity. We have continuity over this whole range of integration though. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna show that this thing converges, and we're gonna do it by something called the limit comparison test for integrals. So the limit comparison test for series convergence is used quite a lot, but it's generally skipped in a calculus two class for integrals. So I think this is a nice opportunity to use this. Okay, so what should we limit compare it with? Well, let's look at the dominant term here. The dominant term is one over x squared because this x term is much, much larger than this natural log of x term. So, like I said, we're going to use the limit comparison test with the function, I'll call it g of x equals 1 over x squared. And we know that that function converges by the p-series test for infinite integrals. Okay, so let's get to it. So we need to take the limit as x goes to infinity of this function over this function or vice versa. So let's try it this way first. One over x minus ln x squared over one over x squared. So that's what we've got. Okay, so now what can we do? Well, we probably wanna simplify this a little bit. That'll give us the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared over x minus the natural log of x squared. And then from here, maybe I'll factor an x squared out of the denominator so that I can cancel it with the one in the numerator. So if I factor it out of the denominator, I'll be left with x squared and then one minus the natural log of x over x quantity squared. So something like that. Canceling with the numerator, we'll get this limit as x goes to infinity of one over one minus the natural log of x over x quantity squared. And then maybe on the side, we can have the following observation, which will finish it all off. And that observation is that as x tends towards infinity, the natural log of x over x tends towards zero. And that's pretty easy to check just by using L'Hopital's rule one time. So using L'Hopital's rule one time will give us one over x over one, which clearly tends towards zero as x tends towards infinity. But if this thing tends towards zero, this thing here tends towards one. So we, here we have the limit of this quotient exists and is finite. So that means that the integral of one over x squared and the integral of one over x minus natural log of x quantity squared do the same thing. But we know the integral of one over x squared converges, so that means we know this thing converges. So that finishes the proof of convergence. Now we're ready to jump into finding its value expressed as an infinite sum. And we're going to use the following tool, which I will not prove. It's a standard exercise in a calculus class. That is the integral representation of the gamma function. So if we define gamma of alpha to be equal to the integral from zero to infinity of t to the alpha minus one e to the minus t dt, then if m is a natural number, gamma evaluated at m is m minus one factorial. So we'll keep this in mind as we work on this term right here. Okay, so let's get rid of this proof and then we'll jump into our main goal. So we just got done showing that this thing indeed converges and now we're ready to express its value as an infinite series. And we're actually going to use one of the calculations that we did in the proof of convergence in order to simplify this. So I can rewrite this as the integral from one to infinity 
of one over x squared times one minus the natural log of x over x quantity squared dx. And you might say, well, why do I wanna do that? Well, I want to do that because natural log of x over x is always between 0 and 1. So that means it's always in the radius of convergence of the power series expansion of this rational function. So let's see how we can express this as an infinite series. So we'll use the following fact. So I'll say we'll use the fact that 1 plus u plus u squared dot 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 is equal to 1 over 1 minus u. And this is obviously if the absolute value of u is less than 1. But next, if we take a derivative with respect to u of both sides, let's see what we get. So over here, we'll have 1 plus 2u plus 3u squared dot dot dot, which can be rewritten in summation notation as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus 1 times u to the n, if we were to like index that appropriately. But if we take the derivative down this side, we'll see that we get 1 over 1 minus u quantity squared after using the power rule and the chain rule. But now if we take each of these and set u equal to the natural log of x over x, then we'll be able to re-express this object using a power series. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So like I said, we're gonna have this sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of n plus one. I can take that out and then we'll have the integral from one to infinity of, let's see, one over x squared. So that's what we get from here. And then the natural log of x over x to the nth power. So that's what we get from this guy right here. And then we'll say this is all dx. Okay, so that's what we've got. So now we can take this and put some things together so that it can be simplified a bit. So we'll have the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of n plus 1 times the integral from 1 to infinity of the natural log of x to the n over x to the n plus 2 dx. And now how might we work with this? Well, I think maybe we should do a substitution to change this from an integral involving a logarithm to an integral involving an exponential. So the substitution that I will make is x equals e to the y. So let's notice that means dx equals e to the y dy. And furthermore, it means natural log of x is equal to y. Now let's see what happens to the bounds of integration. If x is equal to 1, then that means y is equal to 0. And as x approaches infinity, y also approaches infinity. So that's how those bounds of integration will change. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of n plus 1 times the integral from 0 up to infinity. So this natural log of x to the n will now be equal to y to the n because of our substitution. This dx will be equal to e to the y dy. And then this x to the n plus 2 will be equal to e to the n plus 2 times y. So that's what we're left with. Okay, so now let's do a quick simplification before we move on to the next board. We can take this e to the y here and cancel this n plus 2 down to an n plus 1, just using exponent rules. Okay, so now let's bring that up to the top and then we're ready to finish it off. So we just left ourselves with the following infinite sum of these integrals. So I've got the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, n plus 1, the integral from 0 to infinity, y to the n, e to the minus n minus 1y dy. Now I'm going to re-index this really quickly just so that it looks more like this object that we have over here. So I'm going to take all of my n's and I will replace them with n minus 1's. So that means instead of starting at n equals 0, I'll start at n equals 1. 
this n plus one will become an n. Here we'll have n minus one, and here we'll have minus n. Okay, so that's a bit messy, but let's clean it up. Okay, that's better. And this looks almost like the gamma function. If you notice, we have t to the alpha minus one, e to the minus t. Here we have y to the n minus one, e to the minus n times y. So this n that's in this exponent is the only thing that's throwing us off. But we can take care of that with another substitution. So in this case, let's make our substitution t equals n times y. So notice that means that y is equal to 1 over n times t, which tells us that dy is equal to 1 over n dt. Furthermore, the bounds of integration don't change in this setting, so we don't need to worry about those too much. Okay, so let's get all of those put in here. We can replace this with, like I said, 1 over n dt. This guy right here will be replaced with t to the n minus 1 over n to the n minus 1. This guy right here will be e to the minus t. Okay. So all in all, we have the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity. We have this n right here. And then we've got some n's in the denominator as well. We have an n to the n minus 1 and then times an n. So that's an n to the nth power in the denominator. Okay, then we'll have our t integral, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the n minus 1 e to the minus t dt. But this guy right here is exactly the expression for our gamma function evaluated at a natural number. So that's good. We can just make that replacement. So this is going to be the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity, n over n to the n times n minus 1 factorial using this. But now putting those two things together, we have the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of n factorial over n to the n. That's because n times n minus 1 factorial is clearly n factorial. And like I said at the beginning, this number does not have a nice enclosed form, but it is a series expression for this integral. Furthermore, at the very beginning, we showed that this integral converged, so we know that this series also converges. And that's a good place to stop.